My name is Dr. Mrinalini and I am the patient advisory at Medigens. Today we have Dr. Partha Das with us. He's the deputy medical director at Orchid Fertility. So, hello doctor. How are you doing? Hello Mrinalini. I'm I'm good. Thank you so much for the invite. Thank you so much. All right. So Dr. Das uh, has around 15 years of experience in tertiary center care and uh, he has handled gynecological complex gynecological uh, issues related to infertility and has helped many couples achieve parenthood. So to start this, today's topic is based on unexplained infertility. Now couples nowadays face a lot of confusion and they come across a lot of acronyms when we talk about deciding on the best fertility treatment that is to be used. However, they do not know actually what is the cause of infertility. So this brings us to today's topic that is unexplained infertility. So to start with, doctor, can you let us know what exactly is unexplained infertility? All right. Thank you so much uh, uh, for the question, Rinalini. Um, so before I start talking to you about unexplained infertility, let's know what is infertility. So as we all know, infertility has been uh, classified uh, by the World Health Organization nowadays as a disease. All right. So uh, uh, it, it is basically defined as uh, somebody uh, who has been trying to achieve a conception uh, uh, and uh, after one year of unprotected intercourse and they have still not been able to achieve a pregnancy. So uh, then that's when we tell them that, OK, uh, uh, this couple is infertile because they have tried for one year unprotected intercourse. But this duration of one year uh, is reduced for ladies who are 35 years and above. So uh, if somebody is 35 years and more than 35 years above and they have been trying to achieve a conception and having unprotected intercourse uh, for six months, then uh, for those ladies, we say that, okay, uh, you are infertile and uh, you need to go in for an evaluation. So when you go to the doctor and the doctor has tested uh, your scans, your blood test, uh, your tube test and the husband's sperm test and if everything has come back normal, then that's when we say that, yes, it is an unexplained infertility, wherein uh, no cause can be found for your infertility. All right, doctor. So moving on, there can be different reasons for unexplained fertility. So uh, can you please let us know uh, what are the different causes? Like you just mentioned a few of them. So can you let us know more in detail about what are the other causes of unexplained infertility? So... As we all know and we understand very clearly that uh, life begins with an egg. If the egg is good, that's how the life starts provocating forward. So first and foremost, advanced maternal age uh, is uh, the number one cause for, for ladies uh, who are not able to get pregnant at the right time. And uh, when we say advanced maternal age, uh, our, the scientific community has uh, defined an age 35 years and more than 35 years uh, to be the uh, uh, mark, uh, age mark where uh, yeah, the fertility uh, status can be a little compromised. So um, with advanced age comes the quantity of the eggs left in the ovary as well as the quality of the eggs left in the ovary. So all these factors can go hand in hand uh, to prevent a, a pregnancy outcome. Uh, of course, we have to understand lifestyle factors. When we say lifestyle factors, means somebody who has who is living uh, a sedentary lifestyle, who does not do much of physical activity, uh, who does not do much of exercise, uh, who has got um, habits like smoking, uh, alcohol, uh, or, uh, or having recreational drugs. And of course, we have to understand that uh, we are surrounded by environmental uh, pollutants and stress. Uh, so all these factors do culminate in, uh, in this problem of infertility. Um, also, we have to understand that the tubes are to blame for. Now, herein, we are not talking about uh, blocked tubes because we have uh, told the couple that you are infertile because of unexplained reasons. And all those tests which we have done, like your tubal test, is normal. So we are talking about the microciliary function of the tubes and that uh, can happen when somebody has got any kind of pelvic infection, like chlamydial infection or tuberculosis. 
uh, we also have to understand the husband sperm parameters. You know, uh, there are some specific problems with the sperms which we call as sperm DNA fragmentation tests, uh, which can be done on, on men where, where, where in the morphology of the sperm count seems to be a little on the lower side. Uh, endometriosis, uh, which are, which I'm not talking about the endometriosis, which are uh, the big cysts. I'm talking about the microscopic small deposits in and around the ovaries, which can cause scarring and adhesions. Uh, adenomyosis of the uterus, which is nothing but the endometriosis of the uh, uh, uterus. Um, and also we have to understand about the unseen variety, which is the immunological factors. Is the mother's body making a lot of immune cells uh, which is uh, detrimental to an embryo implantation. And of course, last but not the least, psychological uh, issues needs to be uh, addressed because many a times uh, a lot of women have uh, what we say a vaginismus where uh, they are not able to have penetrative intercourse. And, uh, and these are the things which is, a, which is considered a taboo in the society and they do not want to discuss it out. And uh, the problem is that they are not able to have intercourse and that is why uh, they are not able to have a pregnancy. So psychological issues and uh, all these um, factors needs to be uh, understood and discussed and spoken with the patient. So yes, these are the telltale causes of uh, unexplained infertility. All right, doctor. Now, as you just mentioned, now see, whenever a male and a female, they come together and, you know, they will, this will definitely enhance their fertility in a positive way. However, if, like you just mentioned, uh, however, when there is an infertility cause uh, or a factor that's there, so how does it affect the psychological well-being of the patient? So can you, can you let us know on that and how can that be overcome? You know, this is a big question that you have asked me, you know, and uh, the, it sounds very simple, but it is to answer this question is quite difficult. Uh, now, psychological issues do play a very, very important role, uh, not only from fertility uh, point of view, but in general also. Um, the second point being is that in our community, uh, we always consider uh, somebody who is not able to get pregnant as, you know, as we try and tend to look down upon, and which, is, which should not be a, uh, 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 a problem. Actually, the thing is that um, couples who are uh, not able to achieve a pregnancy, uh, they should seek out, they should reach out to their uh, physician, uh, to their uh, gynecologist, uh, or the fertility doctor to uh, discuss their problem. Uh, and plan a treatment modality uh, forward. Mm. And uh, at the same time, a counseling sessions, a psychological counseling sessions needs to be addressed, not only for the woman, of course, but also for the men and uh, a family at large to, to, to explain to them the process of uh, the baby making. And uh, sometimes it is time consuming, but uh, if it is discussed properly, then all these problems can be addressed, yes. And, uh, and, you know, before starting any treatment, you know, the patient would definitely undergo certain fertility tests. So what is the evaluation that is involved and what are the series of tests that can be done to diagnose in unexplained infertility? So if a couple uh, comes to us and uh, saying that, you know, they've been trying unproductive intercourse for a year or so and they are not able to achieve a pregnancy, so that's when, when we want to do some baseline test. So starting from the woman, uh, we would like to do an ultrasound of her ovaries uh, to check how many follicles and eggs she has. Uh, we can count those follicles. Uh, we need to check the endometrium or the uterus to make sure that there is no anatomical uh, lesions like fibroids and polyps. We need to uh, look for endometriosis. Uh, we also have to do uh, a tubal patency test to check if the tubes are open or not open. Uh, we also have to do conduct some blood test, uh, which uh, a specific one being AMH, which is called anti-mullerian hormone, and that is a marker of ovarian reserve. And for the men, uh, we have to uh, do a semen test to check for his sperm, uh, sperm count, motility, and morphology and uh, other uh, endocrine uh, blood parameters like the thyroids and the prolactins also needs to be evaluated. All right. So moving on to our next question. Now, how is a patient supposed to know that, okay, he or she has unexplained infertility? So um, as I said uh, in my initial uh, uh, 
question, the initial question that was asked to me, that if somebody has had uh, uh, one year of uh, you know, trying and they have not achieved a pregnancy, so that's when they uh, reach out to their uh, gynecologist or the local physician. And when the doctor does the initial checks and they found that your tubes are open, the uterus looks brilliant, the eggs are absolutely good, husband's sperms are good and all other hormonal uh, endocrinological factors in the uh, blood are good and there is no cause that needs to be found. So that's when they say that, okay, uh, with all these factors being normal uh, and you're still not uh, able to get pregnant, so probably we are dealing with something called unexplained, means we cannot explain the reason of you being infertile. So what needs to be done? Uh, so hearing, uh, we, 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 we as fertility uh, consultants, uh, we step in and we have to uh, analyze this uh, whole uh, um, uh, issue. And then we have to uh, offer a treatment plan. So the treatment plan would be to uh, maximize the time to pregnancy, it means reducing their uh, time to, uh, duration of you know, achieving a conception and a positive uh, outcome. So then we uh, try to uh, do scans, serial scans, and advise them to have uh, planned natural intercourse. If that's not successful, then we can do a few cycles of artificial insemination. And if that is unsuccessful, then we have to resort to in vitro fertilization, what we say is test your baby treatment. Okay. And uh, assuming that uh, none of these uh, treatments work, then what is the approach that is being used? Then what is supposed to be done? That is where the enigma of uh, the whole infertility issue comes in because in fertility practice, uh, we cannot uh, guarantee 100% success rate. Uh, we just um, uh, uh, aid in nature's way of uh, doing things scientifically. So if somebody has not had an outcome, a positive outcome uh, after a few cycles of uh, uh, artificial insemination, then we have to discuss these options and we have to resort to uh, in vitro fertilization program. Now in vitro fertilization program can be done umpteen number of times. Now with the recent advancements of uh, scientific advancements of uh, technology and the medications that we use, we usually um, uh, do IVF like once where we uh, harvest a good number of eggs and freeze a good number of embryos. And uh, if uh, the embryos are genetically tested and if they come out normal, then if she has got more than three, four embryos uh, frozen, then she has got three, four attempts to achieve a conception. So most of the um, uh, ladies in this group, almost like 65 to 75 percent of the women in this group, they fall pregnant. The remaining uh, 20, 25 percent who are not able to achieve, then we have to conduct um, further uh, causes of uh, further treatments of IVF program, but also understanding to do a little more evaluation uh, from the uterus point of view uh, by making sure to do a hysteroscopy to make sure there is no endometri uh, endometriosis of the uterine lining, uh, adenomyosis is taken care of. Uh, we do some immunological treatment. And uh, more with most of this uh, add-on treatments, sometimes we achieve a good conception, and uh, and we try to uh, try to achieve uh, the success as soon as possible. Uh, the, the the rest depends upon the patient's uh, wish if they want to uh, continue further courses of uh, you know IVF around and uh, take it forward. Yes. All right, doctor. Now, we've also seen in the past that, you know, there are certain medications that might be used. For example, the use of uh, Clomid is very common. And, uh, you know, also there are there are treatments on uh, stimulation drugs that are given. So uh, would you would you like to tell us more on that? So uh, the Clomiphene citrate or the Femara, the letrozole tablets, these are the basic uh, uh, you know, now ovulation induction uh, medications uh, that we have and that we usually would like to start with. Uh, the younger you are in your age group and the good uh, ovarian uh, response uh, or the enteral follicular count you have, uh, we would like to start with this uh, oral medications, uh, which is the clobifin citrate or the uh, Latara tablets. In case uh, we find that the ovulation uh, process is not good, means the follicular maturation is not good, and then we have to resort to injectable gonadotrophins uh, to boost the ovarian follicular development. So yes, we do understand that when we do give these medications, um, either in the oral uh, tablet form or injectable tablet form, 
um, we uh, try to achieve a multi follicular development. At least more than one or two follicles can grow. Uh, so the chances of uh, more than one uh, pregnancy can happen, like twin pregnancies also uh, can happen. And that is the risks involved when we want to do something like artificial insemination. So we discuss uh, these uh, issues uh, with our uh, couple and uh, a proper counseling session is done uh, to ensure one baby at a time. Uh, in case we find that there are a lot of follicles, then we either cancel that cycle or we can convert that into a vitro fertilization program. Our, our audience does understand unexplained fertility better now and uh, they, they understand it much better and they came to know more about this. So we do look forward to much more sessions with you. So thank you so much, doctor. Thank you for taking our time and being here with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manali. Thank you so much for this question and thank you for the time. Thank you.